call Senator Brown. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Last night, the newspaper reports tell us the Prime Minister phoned his opposite number in East Timor uh, to deliver blackmail in the night. What the Prime Minister effectively did was to coerce a poor and weak neighbour through blackmail into accepting an agreement to develop the uh, fossil fuel. Point of order. Point of order, Senator Brown. Uh, this Senator is Bitt. clearly casting an aspersion on the Prime Minister, accusing him of engaging in blackmail. Uh, not only is it illegal, uh, it is uh, uh, casting an aspersion on the Prime Minister and ought to be withdrawn. I think he's correct, isn't he? Senator Brown, you should not accuse the Prime Minister of blackmail, and I ask you to withdraw that. Well, I, I believe that that's what happened. No, that's, the, that's my ruling. Uh, well, I'm not going to withdraw that. That's what happened last night. Uh, that is exactly what happened last night. And, and it would be uh, a breach of faith in my own view of the matter to withdraw that, that statement. What do we do now? You a second time, Senator Brown, to withdraw the blackmail allegation against the Prime Minister, or rephrase it. Last night, the Prime Minister made a call to his opposite number in East Timor, which effectively was to coerce East Timor into making an agreement which was against its own interests. As a point and, of order, um, Just a moment. we've got another point of order, Senator Brown. Yes, but I'm making mine. My uh, well, point of order. Point of order against while you're while you're on your feet. Yes, no, but a point of order can't intervene on a point of order. Yes, that's the whole purpose of points of order. S Senator McGowan, you've got a point of order against. Point of Senator Brown, if I can garnish what he was trying to say, he was debating your instruction, which was first to withdraw and rephrase if he wishes to. Now, surely he has a grasp of the English language to find another word. That is within the standing mm -hmm. orders. Uh, so I say he, uh, I would put it to you, Mr. Chairman, that he's challenging your ruling. He's debating the issue. That's your point of order, is it? Can I have some of the parts? Senator Brown, you can't debate my ruling. I've made a ruling. I've given you an option, and it's up to you to uh, either withdraw or to use some alternative phraseology. Last night, the Prime Minister used blackmail on East Timor, and I won't withdraw that. It's a, it's a matter of fact. Uh, this is such a serious matter. It is such a, a uh, deplorable behaviour by Australia against its poor East Timorese neighbour, and uh, we have to call a spade a spade, and that's what I'm doing. Now, I don't believe uh, that is outside standing orders. I'm prepared to uh, further fill out the reasons for me making that statement, but it would be uh, not proper for me to withdraw a statement which, cover, which is factual uh, in, in effect. Senator Brown, you're impugning a motive against the Prime Minister accusing him of blackmail. That is unacceptable, and I ask you to withdraw or to use some other alternative language. I'm sorry. Acting Deputy President, the motive of the Prime Minister last night was to coerce East Timor uh, in terms of resources and money through uh, a threat to withdraw this legislation uh, if uh, the uh, East Timorese government did not agree to signing the agreement today. That's why Mr Down has gone to, has to Bali. Now, that's has a he? statement of fact. That is what the Prime Minister hmm? did. I will not um, withdraw. Senator Brown, you're challenging the authority of the chair when I have asked you to withdraw. You can withdraw and then use alternative language if you, if you wish, but it is a requirement, I think, that you should uh, respect the decision of the Chair. Well, Chair, uh, I believe you are wrong in your ruling. I stand by my statement. The Prime Minister and the Government of Australia is involved in blackmail of, of the clearest order against our poor East 
Timorese neighbour. That's what's happened. Now, I'm not going to withdraw that. I, will, I am prepared to uh, elaborate on it, if you will give me the opportunity, but I if, will not withdraw if you're going a to statement dissent, of fact. If you're going to dissent, it is necessary to put your dissent in writing. No, Chair, I'm not dissenting. I'm not accepting uh, the ruling. Um, I'll leave that matter for you to determine. You're refusing to withdraw. My ruling in refusing to withdraw. And I've asked you to withdraw. If you're going to dissent from my ruling, your next stage is to put it in writing. I've been advised by the clerk. Well, I will. I will reiterate, uh, with, with greatest respect to you, Acting Deputy President, this is a matter of enormous importance. Uh, I find, my, as I said earlier today, I'm very angry about. Order, Senator Brown, we now have another point of order. Mr. Acting Deputy Bates. President, uh, I think you have been very lenient with the Honourable Senator. You have given him a course of action to withdraw and then, if he wishes to, to use alternate language. He has now defied your ruling on a number of occasions, repeated the word, and, uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, I believe the Senate is now in a position uh, where uh, it is incumbent upon Senator Brown, if he has any respect for the institution of this place, and look, we all have to withdraw from time to time when we like it when we don't like to, yet 24 hours later we usually go back to our offices and say, yep, that was a fair cop and it should have been withdrawn. Now, the Honourable Senator has been given the opportunity to withdraw. Uh, if he doesn't, quite frankly, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, he should not be given the opportunity to flagrantly uh, violate your ruling, disregard it and, as a result, not only hold you but the standing orders and this whole place in contempt. Thank you. I will read uh, 198 standing, uh, standing order, objection to a ruling for the clarification of the Senate. If an objection is taken to a ruling or a decision of the Senate, such objection must be taken at once and in writing and a motion moved that the Senate dissent from the President's ruling. Debate on that motion shall be adjourned to the next sitting day unless the Senate decides on a motion without debate that the question requires immediate determination. Senator Brown. Well, thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. And I say again with great respect, um, I'm not complying with your ruling. I don't withdraw, but I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not issuing dissent uh, with it. Somebody else can do that if they wish to. Uh, my, my position is clear. I am not withdrawing uh, the comments I made because they are factual. Okay. Can I just get some advice about what's the next step, procedural step? President, could I draw your attention to the state of the Senate? Quorum not present. Ring the bells. That sounds a logical way.
call on prayer. present. Senator Brown, under the circumstances I have no alternative than to name you for per uh, persistently disobeying the ruling of the uh, President. It is therefore a requirement of me to report that to the Senate. You're following that, you'll be given an, op an, uh, an opportunity to make an explanation, and then it is up to the minister to move a motion, which will be presumed debated tomorrow, the next day of sitting. So I report to the Senate that Senator Brown has persistently disobeyed a ruling of the president and I now call on Senator Brown to make an explanation. I thank you, Acting Deputy President. Uh, the, President uh, the Acting Deputy President required me to withdraw the word uh, blackmail as applied to the Prime Minister. Um, and I'd made the statement to the Senate that the Prime Minister had engaged in overnight blackmail in uh, ringing his opposite number in uh, East Timor to apply pressure to have the East Timorese uh, sign an agreement today for the development of the Timor Gap oil and gas fields uh, in return for having this bill go through the Senate today. That is as reported by uh, today's Age newspaper. Now, uh, the uh, Chamber should know that uh, the East Timorese government have been put under uh, point of order. Se Senator Brown, we have a point of order raised by Senator Faulkner. Uh, could I be clear, um, could I be clear, Mr. Acting Deputy President, that you're taking this action uh, under Standing Order 203, uh, 2033? Correct. Well. My point of order is this, and this has been raised uh, previously as a point of order in this place in the unusual circumstance when uh, these sorts of matters are before us. Uh, you called on uh, Senator Brown uh, to make an explanation. I think I Correct. heard you correctly. Uh, and of course, uh, understanding order 203 Three, it is competent for that to occur, but it is also competent uh, for when you invoke that standing order uh, uh, after a senator has been reported to call upon the senator concerned, in this case it's Senator Brown, to make an explanation or apology. He's doing that. that well, well, I don't believe that was done. I'm, he's called on to make an explanation. I, I want to be. I, I do think. I'm not suggesting that Senator Brown would necessarily. Um, well, hang on. I'm not suggesting that. No. Well, the, yeah, but look, this is a procedural point that's been raised before in this circumstance. It's. I know I'm right, but uh, but the, the but whether Senator. Brown avails himself of such an opportunity is entirely a matter for him. My point of order is that that opportunity should be extended to a senator in this circumstance. That's my only point of order. I'm not suggesting for one moment in this instance or any other instance a senator might necessarily avail themselves of that opportunity. But I like to be consistent in the, relation, in, in the way these matters are dealt with, and when, 
and I've, I've, I think we've recently seen in this chamber, or the most recent circumstance, when a senator has been reported, we had the then uh, president raised before. I think, therefore, Senator Brown ought to be asked properly to make, be called upon to make an explanation or apology, not called upon to make an explanation. Well, that's what I intend to do. I'd call upon Senator Brown to make an explanation or an apology, as it says in the standing orders. Thank uh, Senator Faulkner for drawing our attention to that option, but uh, I do not make an apology, uh, but I will make an explanation. The, I said in the debate earlier that the Prime Minister had been engaged in overnight blackmail uh, with the East Timorese government, his opposite number. Uh, and uh, I stand by it. Now, the reasons I made that statement are very clear. We are here debating today a piece of legislation which will involve, according to Foreign Minister Downer, a $50 billion uh, break for Australia from the development of the oil and gas fields, which are wholly within uh, East Timorese waters, according to my interpretation and those of a number of international jurists. But uh, the boundaries have been moved during the period of in Indonesian occupation to exclude uh, part of those oil fields, and this treaty uh, effectively excludes the lot and gives to Australia, uh, if not 50-50, then the majority of the profits that are going to flow to governments from those oil fields. This is Australia being involved in a grand theft of the resources of our, uh, of our small uh, neighbour in East Timor. The most impoverished neighbour in the neighbourhood having its one resource that's going to help it get up off the ground in the future taken by its richest neighbour next door. And Prime Minister Howard, on behalf of the oil corporations, uh, Mr. President, ringing uh, a Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of uh, East Timor, Dr. Al Qatiri, last night, and, and saying to Dr. Al Qatiri, according to the Age report, if you do not sign the agreement for the, for the development of the Greater Sunrise Field, which is the, the biggest field, which is East Timorese, but give that resource effectively. Uh, or in the major part to Australia, then we won't have this legislation go through the Senate today, which allows for the development of the other oil field, the smaller oil field, which uh, the East Timorese want to see development developed. Now, acting uh, now, President, that is the Prime Minister saying, "Do as we want, or we will take away a, a potential lucrative contract with the Japanese for development of the Bayou Ondan." Oil field. That is blackmail. That is blackmail. That is overnight blackmail. And uh, the Senate may ask me to withdraw that comment, but to do so would be asking me to withdraw a factual comment which actually accurately describes the Prime Minister's behaviour uh, in this affair. And I will not do so. Senator Campbell. I understand you wish to uh, Mr yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr President I move understanding order 204 that the uh, senator be suspended uh, I have to put that motion without debate the question is that motion be agreed to those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Ring the bell.
lock the doors. The question is the motion of suspension moved by Senator Camp. Order. Order. Senators on my right will come to order. The question is the motion of suspension moved by Senator Camp will be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes will pass to the left of the chair. I appoint Senator Order. I appoint Senator Ferris, teller for the ayes. Senator Allison, teller for the noes. Order. The result of the division there being 58 ayes and 8 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. And understanding Order 204, Senator Brown, you are suspended from the Senate for the remainder of the sitting today. <laughs> Senator Campbell. I to move a motion in relation to the order of business. Is leave, is leave granted? Being no objection, leave is granted. He's got it already. Oh, Senator Ian Campbell. Campbell. Order. I move that the, uh, the, the debate be adjourned. The question is the debate on this matter be adjourned. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it.